welcome one and all to the next uh, social isolation. I guess we're still calling it that. Awesome. I'm really happy to have you here, no matter where you are in the world, uh, no matter if you're like stuck inside or you can go freely wherever, all good. Um, really happy that you're here and I'm happy to be here as well. It's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, we're going to do a bunch of practicing today because if there's one thing we have lots of time <laughs> to do in uh, social isolation times, it's practice, right? Uh, and one of the things that can sometimes, you know, be a bit tricky is to know exactly what to practice. You can run out of things to practice. I know this has happened to me tons of times and I always have to keep going back to, you know, doing exactly what I know is always going to work. And that's, uh, in most cases, not needing tons and tons of uh, exercises. You don't need, a, don't need a, a huge breadth of things to do. What you really need to do is find one thing and go super deep on it. So rather than doing like a hundred exercises, do two or three and just go as far as you can with them. There's this really good uh, old famous, it's, it's attributed to Bruce Lee. I'm not sure if it's actually Bruce Lee, um, but uh, it's, uh, he says, I'd rather face a man who's... Uh, practice 10,000 kicks one time, then face the man who's practiced one kick 10,000 times. So there's, I mean, there's some stuff in there. It's really good. So uh, with this exercise, exercise, with this video, there is an exercise. So if you go to the link in the description right here, and I'll also drop it in the comments right now, right there, uh, there is an exercise in there. And uh, this is just an exercise that uh, I've just been, I'm not sure who made it, Probably not me. I, I don't think I made it anyway. Uh, but it's just like a. It goes through the uh, chords of the major chord scale. It's super fun, uh, and we're going to see exactly how we can take this exercise and just do tons of stuff with it, uh, so you can never run out of things to practice. Yeah, JG Video, Bruce Lee. He's the man. He's the man for all men. All right, but let's go. Uh, just in case you can't get the link or it's not uh, working for whatever reason. Uh, I'll just chuck it up on the screen here. So this is our exercise. Uh, it sounds like this. We're going to go... Now, I'll, we'll, we'll go through like a little bit, uh, you know, more slowly than that, but that's how it sounds. So, um... It's a super, super um, simple exercise. All we're doing is taking the chords from the major chord scale. And if you were, if you're uh, uh, seeing, um, if you've gone through my Ultimate Guide to the Modes on thecommonbasis.com, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We even use the same key. So we're going through uh, the key of uh, G major, and we're just playing one, two, three, five in the first half of the phrase, and then coming back down, four, three, two, one. And then we move to the next chord in uh, the G major chord scale. So we move to A minor. Da, 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 da. And then the next one. Da, 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 da. And then the C chord. Da, 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 da. And then if we just move this down a little bit. Up to the next one. Da, 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 da. Then the E minor. Da, 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 da. F diminished. Da, 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 da. And then the G. Da, 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 da. And I just put that like. Da, 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 da. I just put that in there as like a little uh, thing at the end. So it's not just kind of like ends. It's like makes it a bit more musical, hopefully. Now, uh, if you do have a bass, definitely try and uh, play along because it'll make a lot more sense than if you're just kind of looking at me playing. Uh, if not, though, you can still get a ton out of this. It's going to be fun. So. Um, there's a, a bunch of stuff that's already gone into an exercise like this, but the temptation would be to be like, okay, so I've got this exercise, uh, that's, I know how to play it, uh, you might play it a bit faster, you might play it a bit slower, um, but what I want to teach you is how to squeeze the juice, squeeze every single last bit of useful information and useful, uh, practice out of an exercise like this. And you do that by uh, changing a whole bunch of stuff about it. So this is just one version of the exercise. And if you do have the, uh, the, the PDF that's underneath this video, uh, you'll see that there's a second one in there as well. Let's just stick to the first one for now. Now, uh, actually, it might be a little bit easier if we do this right now so you can see my hands. So right now, all, all we're doing is keeping everything in one position. So... That's our first phrase. We're doing the next phrase in the exact same position. We're just starting on the A. And then same in the next position. The next one. The 
And then we actually have to move out of position to get to the high D here. So we go. Shift up. Okay, so that's a cool exercise. You know, A plus, great exercise. But um, uh, what you can do is just do different things with this exercise. You don't even need to uh, change the notes. Uh, you can keep the exact same notes. One thing to do is, instead of playing everything in one position, move up the neck, up and down the neck, in different ways. So you might move up just on the E string, the E string the A string. So instead of going and then going up here and staying in the same position, let's go up the neck instead. So instead of playing play the same exact thing in a different position, yeah? Same thing. And we gradually, every time, move up the neck. That one's a really handy one because we've got two in one position. The one on the B minor and then on the C. Move up again. Yeah, so that's just one kind of permutation of that exercise, right? We're just playing positionally first. And then moving up the neck next. So already we're not only incorporating uh, the exercise in its like quote unquote purest form, which I don't, you know, it's not really a thing. You're also now working on position shifting and positional playing rather than just keeping everything in one uh, position. Now both are totally valid. You need to be able to do both. You need to be able to play in one position and you need to be able to play all over the neck as well. But this is this is an exercise that you can do exactly that. You don't have to be stuck into one kind of uh, mold per se. Yeah. So uh, what's another way we can do it? What can we keep playing with this idea of where things are played on the bass? What if we instead of going up the E string, let's go up the A string. So instead of going and then moving straight up to the A there, let's um, stay in position. But instead of going up to the B here, we'll go to this B here and go up the neck from there. So we'll end up on this G right here. So we go. This is the same as the first exercise. So is this. So is this. But when we get here, instead of playing the D up here, we're going to play. Like that, right? So we've got a, a three different ways of playing this exercise now. We've got one focused just on the E string, one that's focused just on positional playing, and one that's focused on going up on the A string. So it's slightly different, right? Now, let me ask you this. What are some other ways uh, we can uh, put this stuff into practice? What are some other things we can work on using an exercise like this? Uh, dump it into the chat right now, because I've got like a, a bunch of stuff I could talk about, but I want to hear from you guys. I noticed uh, we've got some questions about, uh, so for example, Prince Aqua, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Uh, he says, uh, building techniques like vibrato, slide, accents, phrasing, dynamics. This is a great question because you can use all these different uh, exercises and basically any exercise that you're already using, there's, chance, there's a really good chance that you can use it to build all these things. You can uh, use uh, vibrato, you can use slides, accents, phrasing, you can work on your dynamics. Let's, try, uh, let's just try that last one, the dynamics one there. Let's take, uh, let's take uh, one bar, uh, play it really softly, one bar, play it really loudly, and try and increase your dynamic range. Make your quiets as quiet as possible. Make your louds like unbelievably loud, like more like, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, obnoxious, maybe? Make it the most obnoxious kind of loud you can play. So that might look something like this. If I go down here, actually, I might just do this real quick. So the first phrase, super quiet. Second phrase, super loud. So we go. Super loud. Super loud. Super loud. And then you might do the second half of the last phrase. Like that. Yeah, so you're taking the exact same exercise 
focusing on a particular part of your planning. In this case, we're talking about uh, dynamics and working that into the, uh, the, the exercise itself. So like I said, you don't need a specific exercise for all these things. You don't need a specific exercise for dynamics, for phrasing, for accents, slides. You can work them into the exercises that you're already doing. In fact, let's do that right now. Let's do, um, uh, oh, what, would be, what would be a good one? Phrasing. I'm not exactly sure uh, what you mean by phrasing. I need a little, little bit of extra context. But let's imagine we're playing this as, not as, a, as an exercise, but as if we're playing music, as if we're playing maybe like a, a Bach cello suite or something. And you want to make this as musical as possible. You want to accent certain notes that you really want to s uh, sing. You want to de-emphasize notes that aren't so uh, you know important. Uh, so let's try a bit of that. So this is a, a phrasing uh, variation. So you might go... Be like very, like coattails, like a Bugs Bunny when he sits down at the piano. Be like, ha, ah, phrasing. Yeah, so you treat it like treat it exactly like a Bach cello suite or something, where you play with the time, you play with the phrasing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's try one more. What do we got? Uh, accents. I'm not exactly sure what you mean by by accents. Uh, I can do a Scottish accent. Uh, that's about it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, so let's let's accent every uh, second eighth note of the phrase. So it's going to be ba ba da da da. So every uh, second eighth note of the f of uh, every bar. So one, two, three, four. Oh, pardon me, I'm messing up my exercise. Ah, uh, yeah, wait. Ah, okay, right. Oh man, this is tricky. This is tricky. This is what I mean about there's always more things to practice. So this is this is messing me up. If I'm accenting the second eighth note of the phrase, then it messes me up. So that's something I need to practice. That's something I can focus on. This is great. The more mistakes you make, the more opportunities you have to improve. They're not mistakes. They're opportunities. Like that, yeah? That's a really, really good exercise for me. Uh, and like there's eight, eight, eight notes in a, in, a, in a bar, so you can put those accents wherever you want them. You can put them in slightly strange places. You might put them in... Uh, 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 different groupings. You might accent three, then hold off on two. You might, uh, and that's going to create some like weird overlapping of the bars. That's going to be super, super cool for developing uh, your rhythmic uh, intention and all that kind of stuff. Let's try uh, another one from Prince Aqua. Let's go slides. Let's try some slides. All right. Let's see. Um, let's slide. How can we slide? Dun, 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 dun. Let's, okay. Let's slide from the first note to the second note in every phrase. Let's see how that goes. This is this will be an interesting one. I haven't tried this before. Like I said, always more things to practice. All right, so let's go. Ah, oh, pardon me. Ah. Oh, that's a tricky one because we've only got a one one fret slide. Okay, so this one's easy enough. That one's fine, but when we get. Ah, uh, oh, yeah, that's weird. Duh, duh. Okay, that's what I'll do. So go from the B to the C there with the index finger, uh, the middle finger, so I'm not being rude. Ah, oh, no, sorry, we're not doing that. We're going from the first note to the second. Okay, so the trick with this one I'm finding is that I want to start on the finger that uh, the second note wants to be on. So, for example, uh, the second note on the G wants to be an A, right? So if I start on the finger I want the A to be on and then slide up to that, it makes things a lot easier. And there's a lesson to be learned in that. This is what I mean. You don't need uh, any specific exercise to target any specific area of your playing. Obviously, some will naturally do that, um, but you can use all your creativity and all that stuff to make these exercises work for you and like never run out of things to practice. Yeah, um, what are some... Uh, oh, pardon me. 
Uh, let's see, we've got some more comments down here. Uh, this is an interesting question. How many exercises should I practice every day? And what about the time I have to spend doing every exercise? And what about the speed as in how fast? Uh, good questions. Let's start, <laughs> let's take them one by one. How many exercises should I practice every day? Uh, it really depends uh, on what exactly you're trying to do. Uh, when I uh, first realized that my technique was pretty rough and I like couldn't play the things that I, I needed to be able to play, I'm like, okay, technique. I'm gonna spend a lot of time on technique. Uh, and I would uh, uh, spend 45 minutes every morning doing uh, uh, finger exercises. And I probably, I probably actually did way more exercises than I needed to. Um, but I mean, it didn't hurt, uh, especially when I like fixed my technique and like I didn't like play with a wrist like this because that's super bad. Um, so it really depends. It depends on uh, how much time you have. Uh, for example, if you've only got 30 minutes a day to practice and uh, you, like 25 of those minutes are taken up with exercises uh, and you actually really just want to play songs, then I would suggest maybe less time on you know things that aren't going to inspire you to play because the thing that's going to improve you the most is time on the bass and good quality time. And we'll get to your next question in a bit because there's definitely some overlap there. Oh, should have brought some water. Never talked this much this early in the morning. Um, but it really will come down to how much time and what your goals are on the base. If you just want to like kind of mess around and that's fine, you don't need to do any exercises if you don't want. If you want to get really serious and really kind of get your SHIT together, can't, can't really swear, sorry guys, uh, then you can do more and you can uh, do different exercises and different permutations of different exercises and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what about the time I have to spend doing every exercise? Uh, this is a really tricky one because you can be playing an exercise but not really getting any value out of it at all. Uh, I've talked about this book before, but there's uh, a book called The Talent Code by a guy named Daniel Coyle. Uh, and the basic premise of the book is that talent isn't something that people are generally born with. It's something that people practice and get, uh, like, gain mastery from the practice. Uh, and the trick, uh, basically, the premise of the book is the more, uh, more time you spend on the edge of your comfort zone, the edge of your ability, uh, the more useful that time and that practice is. So, uh, for example, if, if you get to this exercise, the and you actually can't physically play it, then the edge of your comfort zone is like the base level. Uh, once you get uh, to the next level and you're comfortable actually playing it, then you can start, okay, what's the next edge of my comfort zone? What's the next kind of ledge that I can go? Kind of teeter on for a little bit uh, and not fall over. You don't want to be playing way beyond your capabilities because that's not helpful to anyone at all. Uh, but you want to be right on the edge. So you want to be like getting things maybe 50% of the time. You're like, oh, look at that. I made it. I played it really well. And the next time you're like, ah, oh, I messed it up. Damn it. Uh, so all that kind of thing. Uh, and what about the speed? How fast? Uh, it, I mean, if you're um, playing, uh, if your like, goal is to develop speed, then same thing. You want to get right to the edge of your comfort zone, uh, but not, over, not too far over that. If you're failing to play the phrase like 90% of the time, Bring it back, and you want to. I've, I've talked about this on previous streams. I'm not sure if you were you were there for those, Domingo. Uh, but yeah, you want to start super, super slow, like way slower than you probably think you need to, and then gradually build up from there. And uh, what, by the time you get to the edge of your comfort zone, you'll have all this kind of backlog of solid, solid practice, and you're going to be way more comfortable, way more solid, way more stable at that comfort zone edge. You can spend some time there, and then you can even kind of, it's called, I'm not, I'm not sure if it is called pyramiding, but I call it pyramiding, where you kind of like start very slow, go up to the top, and then go out again. But yeah, so you kind of uh, start super slow, get up to the edge of your comfort zone, hang out there for a while, uh, until your mind starts kind of going, Whoa, and you'll find that if you do this a lot, uh, you will start to mess up more than you get it right, even if it's like at a slower tempo. Uh, and that's totally normal, like your brain just kind of like goes, oh, Stop it. Don't, don't make me do any more, please. And then that's the point where you kind of go back down uh, the pyramid. I uh, hope that makes sense. Uh, but like, yeah, this is a super, super um, personal question. For sure. It's going to depend a lot on uh, on you. Uh, all right. Let's check out some more. Ah, okay. Let's let's do, do more of this. Uh, let's see. Ah, Jordan says, yeah, practice with the metronome as much as possible. Absolutely. So what, so far, we've just been playing kind of like freely, just doing whatever. What if we add... Put this up as loud as it'll go. My little terrible little drum machine. And let's play the exercise... Oh, this one. Uh, play the exercise... Oh, I'll just get rid of this right now. Uh, in time. Uh, one, two, three, four. Let's do the one position version. 
I may, I, may, I may have changed it a little bit there. But yeah, absolutely. Play it uh, with a metronome. Uh, see if you can play it in maybe a different time signature. That works really as well. And that's without changing the uh, the um, the actual notes you're playing. So da -da -da -da. It's, this, this one would actually be kind of tricky because you're playing, you've got like an eight note phrase and it works really well in four. But let's see. One, two, three, two, two, three. That would work as well, changing the time signature. See if you can play it in an odd time signature. Maybe you play it in seven. You might go, uh, I might go, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that kind of thing that works really well as well so there's and by the way we haven't even changed the notes we haven't played anything that's not exactly what's written in the pdf and we've done so many things we've talked about accents phrasing uh playing with a metronome different time signatures uh, uh slides uh phrase uh, i've said phrasing i can't remember phrasing uh, there's tons of things you can do. Uh, we've talked about the range and stuff as well. Uh, what are some other things? Give me some more ideas about... Ah, <laughs> Gary says play it backwards. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm, there, now there's a uh, caveat here is uh, backwards can mean a lot of things. It can mean like play the last note first and then work backwards from there. It can mean like take the chunks and play them backwards. Uh, those are going to be easier probably than playing it uh, note for note backwards. So, for example, if... Uh, let's go over here. And if we start at the, at the bottom... Uh, and we, oh, oh, okay, well, I can't highlight this. <laughs> uh, let's start at the bottom here, uh, which is really the like high part of the neck, and just take these phrases and play them backwards. C1, oh, gotta go up here for this. Then we're working backwards from here. Pardon me. And then you can play that high, like, ending phrase. You can play it down low as well. That's totally an option. Uh, now, if you mean, uh, if Gary means play it specifically, like, note for note backwards, uh, that's going to be trickier because it's going to, it's going to be, it, it, end up, it might end up being a bit less musical uh, because things are a bit stranger. But let's give it a try. Let's, let's, like I said, this is always good to practice. So, I can might do a bit of this so you can see my hands. So let's go G, F sharp, A, G, F sharp, G. Ah, uh, pardon me. Pardon me. Da, 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 da. Okay, so that changes the kind of geometry of the phrase. Instead of going, um, what are we doing before? One, two, three, five, four, three, two, one. We're going one, two, three, four, five, three, two, one. And that changes the phrase. It changes the order of the notes. But that would be a totally legitimate way uh, of doing things as well. Uh, John says he always uses uh, exercises to warm up. Absolutely, uh, totally. If that's a... That's a good choice. All right, let's see. Uh, ah, this is a great one. How about calling out the notes? Let's say you are, aren't as familiar with your fretboard as you'd like to be, and you want to use this exercise to build your fretboard. Absolutely, this is such a good idea. Oh my good, goodness, JG Video, you are a genius. That's actually, I've got like my little notes over here. That's one of the things I had written down that I was gonna talk about, that I didn't expect anyone to actually say. But yeah, absolutely. So, you can go through here uh, and just sing out the notes uh, just actually just say the notes as you're playing them. So go G, A, 
B D C B A G A B C D uh, sorry A B this is, this is tricky A B C E D C B A B C D F sharp E D C B C D E G F sharp E D C D E F sharp A G F sharp E D E F sharp G B A G F sharp E F sharp G A C B A G F sharp F R G A B D C B A G Absolutely. Great exercise. Uh, so if you're looking to learn your uh, your fretboard, you can absolutely do this. If you're like, uncomfortable with different keys, for example, uh, if you're if you don't really know the the key of B, for example, put this exercise in the key of B and and yell out the notes. So you go B C sharp D sharp F sharp E D sharp C C sharp B C sharp D sharp E E A uh, G sharp. Oh man, this is tricky. <laughs> it gets trickier the more um, sharps and flats there are, because like you just want to go da 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 da, da but you have to be like B sharp, D sharp, blah 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 blah, all that kind of stuff, which is uh, makes things a bit trickier. Uh, Jordan Anderson has a great suggestion: sing as you play to help train your ear, uh, just like I did. Absolutely, a great example of uh, of uh, using an exercise not to just play uh, and improve on your bass, but actually improve improve your musicianship as well. So. Da but you're allowed to breathe <laughs> make sure to keep breathing i don't want you to pass out when you're playing bass that's not going to be good for anyone but yeah absolutely jordan has the right idea singing as you're playing um, and it's an immense help uh hey this is a good one as well uh, TLR Racer says, I'm still learning after a 10 plus year break and got given an Elite 4 Schecter recently. I've been trying to mix it up a bit with the right hand techniques, one, two, three finger, and a pick as well. This is great. You can use uh, these exercises to improve your technique. So instead of just doing whatever feels natural, you might do, okay, let's do, uh, uh, let's let's practice like a, a Steve Harris gal. So like, get it get it done, get it done, get it done. Instead of uh, just going one note per uh, one note per note, for example, da, 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 you might uh, yeah. Let's back up. Let's not jump straight to Steve Harris. <laughs> uh, let's start with uh, just one note with a regular. Oh, can you see my right hand as well? Yeah. So I'm just using my regular two finger approach. That's what's natural to me. What's not natural to me is uh, uh, is to play with just one finger. So I'm I'm gonna try that. Ah, pardon me. Ah, see this gets this gets interesting as well because I'm focusing on my right hand and I'm finding uh, mistakes in the left. This is great. Like I said, not mistakes, opportunities for improvement. Ah, and what I'm also finding is that without the second finger, my index finger and middle, uh, which I used to mute a lot. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys caught my uh, video about ghost notes a couple of weeks ago. Um, the yeah, it's like uh, tons of muting happens with the the right hand, and without using that other that <laughs> John says James James would be disappointed with me with me. Absolutely, I would I would disappoint him greatly. I would be the worst disappointment to James Jamison. Uh, but yeah, this is tricky for me. So I'm having to, I'm forcing myself to mute more with the left hand, which is unnatural to me. And that's exactly where you want to be. Practice shouldn't be you sounding great all the time. Practice should be you making mistakes and learning from them. Uh, let's, let's, uh, so I've done two finger. I'm struggling with one. Let's try three finger. What if we do uh, super robotic? We'll go ring, middle, uh, index. So that'll look... Ah, oh yeah, okay, this is super weird. Ah, oh, wait, what am I doing? Ah, so this is something that I, I have, haven't really practiced at all. So this is super weird for me. What is easier for me is just playing three notes. Uh, the... Ah, da, 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 da. All that kind of stuff. But yeah, actually doing like one note per, per finger, that is super tricky. Ah, duh. So, 
Ring, middle, index, 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 uh, index. <laughs> Ring, middle, index, ring. Uh, what did I just do? Ring, middle. Oh, okay. So th that would be something that I would absolutely have to practice. Definitely. Uh, same with a pick. I don't really use a pick that much, uh, but I do know that you have downstrokes and you have upstrokes. What do, uh, do I have anything I can use as a pick? Ah, yes. Trusty uh, one of these things. I can't remember what they're called. So I would have to practice doing my downstrokes and upstrokes. So you might do everything as downstrokes. might do that. You might do all upstrokes. That's different again. You might do uh, alternate picking, so strict down, up, down, up. This gets tricky because you have to jump across strings and stuff. It gets a little bit weird. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Oh, I've messed up somewhere. <laughs> down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. There it is. So I have to go down on the E string and then up on the A string. It gets a bit weird. Same there. Uh, I've just gone up. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Ah, I'm, then my left hand messes up. So this is a great... Uh, way of practicing and finding uh, not flaws but weaknesses in your playing that you can then target and you can just use exercises to do this and like I said this is just using a single exercise haven't changed the notes hardly at all uh, we've just changed changed the rhythm we changed the order when I think it was oh I can't remember was it Gary I can't remember who, who said uh, change the things and put playing in chunks and playing backwards absolutely so there's so many things you can do with just one exercise. Uh, what oh, I've got some notes about, uh, haven't we? Ah, here's, if you do end up wanting to change the notes, uh, you can uh, do things that change the exercise slightly, but not too much. So one example is rather than playing one, two, three, five, is you can play the seventh arpeggio. So you go, so in the case of G, G, B, D, F sharp, and then come down the scale, da, 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 da. And then that places you perfectly to play the next one. <laughs> My dog's just come home, he's really excited. <laughs> uh, what are we at? Well, it's getting up higher in my vocal range there. If you want to, you know, <laughs> extend your vocal range, you could even do uh, that with these exercises. Like I said, there's tons of stuff you can do with just a single exercise. Uh, Roberto says, uh, try learning shapes. It helps. Absolutely. Um, yeah, shapes can help a huge amount, uh, especially if you're like not super comfortable with like the specific notes and learning like key signatures and stuff. Obviously, that stuff gets important the, the more you play and the more advanced you get. But at the start, shapes is totally, totally fine. It's like not a problem at all. Um, 29 Princess L says, I believe it's important and valuable to learn all the notes on your bass as you learn your scales. Absolutely. Was there a question about learning scales first, I think? Uh, Ah, yes, yeah, so it was the same kind of thing. As much as I used to hate playing scales, I now believe they are valuable in your practice. I also believe playing the songs you love will help you learn to play. Absolutely. It's not an either or. It's not like, do I learn scales or do I learn songs? Yes, you learn scales. Yes, you learn songs. You can learn songs through learning scales. You can learn uh, scales through learning songs. Uh, what's a good example of a song that just goes... Ah, so like, um, if you want to learn the blues scale, play songs that use the blues scale. <laughs> It's your, minor, uh, your, your blues scale there. If you want to learn, for example, the minor pentatonic, there's so many bass lines that are like just minor pentatonic. You've got... Um, uh, uh, what's that song called? Uh, Master Blaster. The kind of the breakdown from that. It's all minor pentatonic, and it's super super cool. It's like a super cool song. Uh, but what's uh, what else can we do? We can 
Uh, we've talked about that, different techniques. Uh, yes, um, set the names of the notes, awesome, changing the notes. So hopefully we've just been going for like just over half an hour and we've played, I can't, I don't know how many different versions of this one exercise. Uh, and that's barely changing the notes, barely changing anything about it. Uh, just changing everything around the exercise to target different areas of your playing. So I know it can be really easy to be like, oh, I don't know what to practice. I've practiced everything. But go deeper on the things you already know. Uh, I, had a, I had a really good teacher tell me once that it's not necessarily about the breadth of knowledge that you gain. You don't, uh, you, you know, rather than learning a hundred things a little bit, it's much easier and much better in the long term to pick a couple of things and go as deep with them as possible. So don't build your breadth of knowledge, build your depth of knowledge. And, you know, when you do that, uh, when you learn something really deeply, it kind of permeates out and affects everything else in your uh, your playing as well. So hopefully this gives a bit of insight into how you can, uh, you know, not run out, of, run out of things to practice because it does become a problem, especially if you have a lot of time on your hands and especially if, you know, you're in quarantine or in lockdown or in, you know, self isolation as we've been calling it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Definitely uh, worth, you know, mining your existing exercises for more gold. Uh, now, we, uh, we've only been going for 35 minutes. I'll, I'm happy to take, take some more questions, either about uh, the stuff we've been talking about right now or we can talk about other stuff. We can talk about base stuff. Uh, we can talk about whatever you like. Uh, yeah, cool. Ah, yeah, so this is great. John's saying uh, old dog learning new tricks. Awesome, that's perfect. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's amazing. Uh, 29 Princess, I'm not sure if that's a uh, lowercase L or a capital I, but she says, thanks, Luke. Follows, uh, following you improves my game. Awesome. That's what I love to hear. I love to hear... Uh, that the stuff I'm putting out is actually helping like real people in the real world. So that's awesome. Uh, I had someone someone mentioned uh, something about uh, where was it? Oh, it was about the beard. Ah, I can't find it anymore. But someone was saying something about the COVID beard. And yeah, absolutely. I'm like my chin has not seen the light of day in months. Months, I say. <laughs> uh, but if there's no, uh, like I said, there is a bit of a lag with the. Uh, stream. So if you're typing stuff, it takes a couple of seconds to see me, but it looks like uh, things have gone quiet in the chat, at least on my end. So if you, got, if you guys haven't got more questions, I'm more than happy to call it a day for now. Uh, if you're on the, the BAB uh, email newsletter, uh, I'll see you there. If not, just head to becomeabasis.com and uh, download one of the free resources there. The one that would probably be most uh, relevant from uh, the stuff we've been talking about today is the Ultimate Guide to the Modes, and it's like on the front page of the website. So just go to becomeabasis.com uh, and just sign up for that there. It's uh, super, super helpful to be able to do all that stuff uh, and know how the modes work. And this wasn't specifically a mode exercise, but it's kind of based on the chord theory that we go like really deep into in the Ultimate Guide to the Modes. But like I said, uh, like I say, like on the page, it's not super jargony. It's super, super fun. Uh, but yeah, it's <laughs> well, this is a real problem. At least I got the pasta around my beard. This is like a real thing. I'm like, I'm kind of a messy eater. And I like, I'll, I'll have like porridge in the morning and there'll be like honey and like delicious stuff stuck to the plate. So I'll be like, and my, my partner hates it. She's like, ah, don't do that in front of me. But then I'll end up with like porridge all in my beard. It's super, super gross. <laughs> uh, Christopher Long says, how do you practice soloing? Uh, this is a big question. Uh, <laughs> but I'll, uh, okay, so it depends on a lot of the time what kind of soloing you're doing. So for example, if you're practicing over like a jazz standard, for example, then uh, it's gonna be different than if you're like playing over a single chord vamp. Uh, there are tons of tools you can use to practice soloing. One that I use uh, or have used in the past is uh, iReal Pro, it's just like an app. You plug in chord progressions and tell it what kind of style you want. It's like a band in a box kind of thing, uh, but it's just like an app on your phone. I think it's like $15. Uh, it's like super, super helpful. I use it to make backing tracks as well. Uh, and you can just, uh, it'll just, play groove and stuff and play the chords and you can play over that and hopefully sound as good as possible. Uh, now, as far as, like I said, this is a super big question. Uh, this is probably, um, actually, let's make this the the uh, subject of the next stream. So hopefully, Christopher, you can make it for the next one. But absolutely, let's, let's do a how to practice soloing in the next Social Isolation live stream. Uh, yeah, perfect. That'll be... <laughs> <laughs> Rob's saying, uh, "Keep leaving porridge in your beard, and I'll, uh, I'll be solo." Absolutely, I will be. I'll have to, I'll have to make sure and keep looking in the mirror. But yeah, let's uh, let's make uh, the following live stream, which will be on uh, Thursday at eight thirty p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time. So that's East Coast of uh, the U.S. Uh, Ten thirty a.m. if you're on uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time. 
Uh, it'd be, what, 5.30 on the Pacific coast of the US, and it's like in the middle of the night for Europe. So if, if you guys are up uh, watching this uh, live, you guys are awesome. Uh, but yeah, totally. Ah, Jordan also says one of the most important aspects of soloing is rhythms. Absolutely. Uh, I've actually got a couple of videos on that exact topic. But uh, if you guys, uh, are, like I said on the, on the email newsletter, send me your questions about practicing soloing uh, just on an email. Uh, and if, you're, if, uh, if you just like just saw this like as a notification on YouTube, send me an email at lukeatbecomeabassist.com uh, and I'd love to answer all your questions about how to practice soloing on Thursday. But let's leave it there for now. I've been saying that for a while, but let's actually do it this time. I'll follow through on my words. Uh, but thank you so thank you so much for uh, for hanging out wherever you are in the world. Big hugs, massive hugs from from uh, from me to you, and uh, I'll hopefully see you on Thursday. Have a good one. Check it out.